Well team, it's finally here, the day we add a post box to our timeline. Awesome. Well, we've been talking about adding a tweet area to our form for some days, so it's definitely time to get that underway. Let's open up our editor, locate our feed component. Now we've got our comment stream here, it's time to add some form markup. Now I've cooked one of these earlier, but I'll take you through it because it's really not too extravagantly magic. So I'm going to paste that in here. I'm going to reformat everything to make it look nice. Control Shift F. Okay, so we've now got a form which has got a, a label and a text area, which is just, there's no magic angular action happening here at all. This is purely just markup straight from the semantic UI page. If I save that and let the page refresh, we'll actually start to see our what's on your mind area with a tweet button. So we're actually looking a bit interesting here. This is pretty great. So the first thing I want to take you through is a very basic element data bind using local variables. So this hash style format is something that you can add in Angular. So say hashtag my text, for instance. This creates a local variable for the template that allows you to reference this particular text area field. Okay, so the actual text area element in the DOM gets bound to this local variable. So once we've got that, we could use an event to catch our actual click on the tweet. So we know how to do this. This is old news for us, but just to refresh you, we put it in rounded brackets, and then we give it a method that we can invoke on our backing bean. So let's make it on new tweet, and I'm gonna pass in my local variable, my text. So then I'm gonna obviously have to implement that in my backing component. So let's just copy and paste that so I can remember it. Copy that and put it in our feed component. Let's find a space here, maybe at the end on new. And what we might do just, just for fun is we're just gonna log out my text so we can at least have a look at what it is and uh, make sure that we're actually invoking the method and that we can see the element that's being bound to it. So. This is my first tweet, yay, tweet. Okay, so you see, when we've console logged it, what we've logged out here is a text area element. Okay, so if we wanna get the value of that, this is a straight DOM element, so we'll need to access its dot value property. So let's do that here, dot value. And we refresh that. Second tweet. Yay, tweet, second tweet, yay. So we're actually now outputting the value and we've accessed the value element here. If we wanted to go nuts, we could actually start adding this to our timeline. In fact, why don't we do that? Because that would give us feelings of wonderful progress. So I'm just going to grab this, my text.value. All I'm doing here, uh, if you're not familiar with the JavaScript, uh, unshift method. This uh, basically appends an element at the start of an array. So I've got our array of tweets, which is an array of objects, which we declared way up here. They've all got body elements and all that kind of stuff and dates and retweets and favorites and whatnot. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to maybe paste in the correct name, which is my text oh, dot value. I'm going to save that. And now we'll find that when I post a new tweet, it should get added to my timeline. Timeline for reels tweet. And there we have it. This is pretty exciting now. We actually have a timeline that we can um, actually add elements to. But this isn't cleared, which is a bit problematic. We might have to put some code around that. But in order to do that, I actually wanna show you a different mechanism for using this binding. So this is a super primitive way of doing it, just binding to the element. Angular has much more sophisticated ways of doing that. But in order to introduce you to them, in particular to a binding, we're gonna to have to first make some changes to our app module. Remember this is where we imported the different components and modules we wanted to use in our application. Well, Angular has a complete forms module and I'm gonna add it here to our imports. Uh, forms module, and then I'm gonna have to import it up here. Maybe after the browser module, we'll put it in there. So we'll import this forms module, and then we have access to a bunch of directives that we can use in our component. So the one I wanted to show you is actually one called ng model, and this is a super popular way of doing two-way data binding. So let me open up here. So I'm gonna get rid of this my text business here, and I'm gonna replace it with a binding to ng 
model. Now the way you specify this is normally you remember we had properties and we had events. So events really come from the view into the model and then we had properties which came from the model to the event. Well, ng model, we want to bind both ways. So it has this uh, syntax where you have square brackets and round brackets. The way people remember it is put the bananas in the box. So put the bananas in the box. So once you put the bananas in the box, you can give it a backing property that has a two-way bind to it. So I'm going to call this, why don't we call it tweet text. And I'm going to save that, but it's going to need a matching text property here in our backing area. So why don't we just set up a tweet text here. Tweet text equals there's nothing there yet. In fact, if we wanted to prove this to ourselves, this is blank. Let's see if it does actually bind. We should get this now bound to that backing property. And there it is, this is blank. Okay, so I'm gonna actually leave that blank for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, in our method, when we actually add our tweet, instead of us taking any arguments anymore, we'll get rid of that. We can get probably get rid of our console.log and we'll change that to this dot tweet text and we'll change this body value to this dot tweet text and then when we're done what we might do is we might send this dot tweet text to blank save that so now we should be in a state where we've grabbed the bound field we've appended it to an array element here unshifted at the start and then we clear the element Obviously there's a lot of error handling stuff to come yet, but this is a good starting point. This is a good starting point. I'm gonna tweet that. This is a good starting point. Now I see in the console, it's been added to our timeline and it's cleared and ready for our next tweet. So that is a very, very simple example of using the ng model element to bind a particular field from the view two ways first of all into the backing component and then back from the backing component back into the view both ways. So put the banana in the box and you can start using ng model. Later in the series I'll show you how to use the new forms stuff to get a more sophisticated way of doing this including making use of validation and uh, dirty checking and uh, error, error display and all that sort of stuff, required fields and whatnot. But for now this is a simple way of doing two-way binding to introduce you to the notion. So that's kind of fun. Now we've been accumulating technical debt like crazy as we cowboy our way through this back end. In tomorrow's episode, I think I wanna start looking at refactoring, introducing a tweet object rather than just using one of these kind of maps to hold all our data. And also introduce you to the unit testing side of Angular, which is pretty swish. So stay tuned for that tomorrow, it's gonna to be fun.